Okay, today I'm going to be showing a more streamlined tutorial for how to create a simple twisty puzzle and also how to pillow that twisty puzzle and even make a modification of it. So, we're going to open up a new part. Sorry for my slow computer. Okay, so the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to change my unit of measurement here to millimeters. I'm more comfortable with that. You can certainly do it in inches if you wish to. Um, now we're going to start out with creating a sketch and I'm just going to choose the front plane here. You can choose any plane that you wish. And we're going to make this a 57 millimeter puzzle. Oops. And that's okay. And then we're going to extrude that. And when we extrude this, we're going to select mid plane. Uh, this assures that the center origin of this cube is going to be directly in the center of our area we're, we're working on. The origin is also the origin of the cube, basically. And that just makes everything a whole lot more streamlined. And uh, to pillow it, we're going to insert a plane that cuts this cube diagonally. And to do that, we're just going to select three of these corners. And we have our plane. We're also going to need uh, various uh, axes through the puzzle. Um, one there, one there, put one there, and we'll even put one right here. Okay, so we're not going to have a flat 3x3, three three. we're going to pillow it. So to do that, we're going to sketch on this plane and I think that I want to make a slightly larger pillow than I usually do and we're gonna pillow it uh, how about uh, six millimeters how's that sound okay so we're going to extend this line way down there and draw a circle from the midpoint of this line. And now what we want to do is we want to make sure that the circle is coincident with the corner of this cube. And that will ensure that the puzzle is indeed 57 millimeters to an edge. Well, as much as an edge that uh, a pillow puzzle can be. And so the next thing we need to do is trim off half of this circle and create a revolved uh, boss base. And we want it on uh, this axis here. You can just select the actual sketch itself. And we want to make sure that we uncheck this merge result. We want it uh, 360 degrees and OK. So now we have this sphere that uh, touches one surface of the cube. To make a puzzle, we need six spheres um, around the cube itself. So we're going to select this axis uh, number two, select bodies to pattern. We're going to pattern that four times around 360 degrees, equal spacing, all that stuff. And so now we have four. We need two more of them. So I'm going to select this axis, and that's the wrong one. And now we have six spheres all intersecting each other. Finally, we need to combine these to make our pillowed cube. And we're just going to select all of these, common, and OK. And we can hide this sphere here. And hey, looky there. We have a very nicely pillowed cube. I'm going to hide this plane. And I'm also going to delete the original cube, because we don't need that. All we want. Let me hide this, and then we'll be able to delete it. 
because all we want is just our pillowed cube. We don't want the original cube. That, that doesn't help us at all. So there we go. Uh, the next step, we have to create our cutting surfaces. And we're just going to sketch on the front plane again. And I'm going to actually design a V cube 3. So to do that, we need some concentric circles for the puzzle. And I'm just going to give some arbitrary, arbitrary uh, dimensions for these. Let's say uh, 28 millimeters and uh, 25 millimeters. And we're going to create a spherical core for this puzzle rather than a uh, spider core. So we need yet one more circle. And I'm going to set that at 22 millimeters. So this puzzle is 57 millimeters from corner to corner. And that means that one QB of equal proportions will need to be 19 millimeters across. So we can create our exiting cutting surface to that point and connect it to our first sphere or circle. The next thing we need to do is we need to create enough uh, space for the centerpiece to be able to hold a screw. And a store-bought Rubik's 3x3 will have a core arm that has a diameter of 9 millimeters, which is 4.5 for a radius. And we can just uh, draw that all the way up to the second sphere. And we're going to trim this to the third sphere. So our final little thing that we need to do is we need to create a cut or line right here to uh, give us that really hooking concentric circle into the uh, puzzle pieces. So I'm not going to create a really precise measurement. I'm just going to cut it right anywhere here. And we're going to want to stop our uh, sphere for the uh, spherical core right there and trim everything else away. And then we're just going to trim everything else off of the sketch, including this cut line there. So now we have our sketch for our puzzle. This one sketch is going to create all of the cutting surfaces that we need for this puzzle. And to do that, we're going to go to the surface, revolve surface, select this axis, and it's going to go ahead and select this sketch. You can click on it if you want, but uh, for this, it's already got it selected. We want it 360 degrees, blind, etc., and we're good. So there's our cutting surface, and we want to pattern this around the same way that we patterned the spheres to pillow it. Oops. Don't do that. Ooh. Sorry guys, what a mess I'm making. Okay. So say you have a lot, a lot of pieces. You've got a really complex puzzle going on here and you really don't want to have to be clicking for ages to select all the pieces. Well, one of the things you can do is you can create two cuts. You can create a split, say with this one here, cut that part, cut it in, into two basically. And now I can delete this half of this, and now all I'm gonna have is this top half. But when I create the cut for it, it's still going to cut it properly. I'm just only going to have these pieces here. And you can select them here or you can select them over here. Hit OK. Then you're going to want to hide your surface bodies. And look at there we have a pillowed V cube 3. So here's our centerpiece. Our corner. And our edge piece. Isn't that neat? So now, real quickly, we're going to create an axis cube. And to do that, we simply need to go back a step or two get rid of those splits and now you can either do this by doing insert face move and selecting all the faces and rotating them or you can actually just 
uh, move the entire body. And that's what we're going to do. We're going to move the whole cube, rotate it around this axis, 60 degrees. And now we can roll forward our time bar again. And we have master parts for an axis cube. It's as simple as that. After you've gotten this far, it's simple as adding fillets and rounds to your puzzle. And we don't want it 10 millimeters, that's outrageous. So your puzzle will rotate smoothly around each other. You're going to have to take into account engineering fit. So while these pieces are perfectly interlocking in here, if you were to say have this puzzle 3D printed, it would be a little tight, so you'd probably want to give a little bit of room for these puzzle pieces to move around. You'll also probably want to hollow these out so they're not completely solid. You're going to have to create a cap for your centerpiece and holes for the screws. You're also going to have to make your spherical core, which is as simple as drawing a sphere in your uh, puzzle, adding screw holes, and that's about it. And uh, I hope this helped you guys out. I hope this was a little bit more streamlined than my previous tutorial. And the next thing up, I'm going to redo my tutorial on how to create a um, Megaminx in SolidWorks. Uh, if you guys have any other questions, uh, feel free to ask me. And who knows, maybe I'll make a couple more tutorials on how I go about making twisty puzzles. Uh, I hope you guys enjoyed it. Thanks a lot for watching.